The next phenotype, it's the phenotype 5. This is about non-cardiac comorbidities. The non-cardiac comorbidities include simply obese patients, patients with diabetes. It's a growing group because more and more patients have diabetes, more and more people are obese. And 50% of HFPF patients are obese and 50% of HFPF patients do have diabetes mellitus type 2. And again, I want to emphasize this, of course, is a growing group. So we have to motivate our patients and probably also ourselves doing the stressful work all the technicians and medical professionals have that we still have to stick to a certain exercise routine. So always keep this in mind that heart failure with preserved ejection fraction can have other non-cardiac comorbidities we have to treat by means of medication, but also by means of lifestyle changes. So this is very important to keep in mind. With this clinical phenotype 5 with the non-cardiac comorbidities, I want to discuss some more disease entities. For example, chronic kidney disease. We do know that chronic kidney disease, so when the kidneys are failing, they cause a volume problem. Also, they cause a problem of the left ventricle. So they can cause heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. On the other hand, when we have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and elevated filling pressures, that can cause on its own chronic kidney disease. Furthermore, we have to think about COPD patients. They can also develop a heart failure with preserved ejection fraction due to their chronic lung disease, patients with sleep apnea, patients with anemia as well. Here's an example of a, another case of diastolic dysfunction grade 3. So the elevated filling pressures are here quite obvious. We have a diseased left ventricle, a diseased left heart, and we have this restrictive filling pattern. We have this very high and steep E wave and a very small A wave. What can we do with this clinical phenotype 5? Well, of course, now we can treat heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and we also can treat the comorbidities. This is just an example of an obese patient we do see here is a lot of fatty tissue also in the pericardium but around the heart as well and we have a definite reduction in image quality. This is a huge problem with obese patients. In patients with a reduction in image quality, we always have to keep in mind we can use contrast imaging that to a certain degree prohibits us from using Doppler measurements. At least we have to be very careful with those. But with contrast agents, we see that left ventricular function or we can see how left ventricular function actually is. And we can also delineate the endocardial borders quite nicely so that we can differentiate the thickness of the myocardium and also the volume of the left ventricle. 